Okay, Andy, I am uh, getting started here. A couple little things um, as we get into this. I've noticed something, one, uh, one thing, and that is that your hack seems to be um, delayed a bit. And I, I'm not sure if it's actually an issue or, um, or what, but we'll, we'll get into it when we get there. I'm going to take the hands off here. Okay, looks pretty good. might be replacements. The, um, the uniformity of the application of the loom seems to indicate to me that these either are very original or, let me take a quick look at the other side here, or they have been replaced, which is okay. Um, That looks good. So, other than this hair, <laughs> um, your sweep hand is correct. Uh, that could be original. I think it is. I think it is. Okay. I think we're good. Let's keep going. All right, let's move these here. All righty. Oh, let's take off your dial. Oop, boy, that came off very easy. All right, so let's look at the back. Hmm. There are no numbers, so we can't really tell. Usually the back of the dial has um, date numbers on it that are about a month uh, a month off from your um, from your um, case back. Now what you can see here you may be able to see it if I put it in the right spot um, somebody's been in here and I think what they've done is they've replaced the Seiko indicator the text on the dial and that's where that scraping comes from. They tried to get in there and, and get the get the Seiko on or off, and I think they've caused a little tiny bit of damage. But you know what? It's very hard to see if you're not right on top of it here with these magnifiers. You may be able to see it if I zoom in just a little bit more. Again, I'm pointing this out simply for your own, uh, for your own information, not to, not to talk badly about the condition. It's just one of those things where I want you to know what you have while we're in here. And there's a little bit of front dial um, pass through from this grinding that somebody's done on the back. Not that it's bad. It's just one of those things we need to be aware of as you get the watch back. Um, I'm gonna try and just get to some of this. I thought this was glue, but I think it's actually, um, there's some there's some brass coming through. Um, I'm gonna work on this just a just the most slightest amount, just to try and get some of this hazing off, and we'll we'll try and get it, try and get it back to um, a uniform, um, uniform color throughout. But it's it's good, it's fine. Okay, here's your dial spacer. Okay, and there's the there's the heart. There's the thing. We're gonna get to this, get this in a movement holder, and start start going to town. rotor before we take it off here. It's pretty tight. You don't have any real brassing around the edges. Usually what happens is this bearing goes bad and uh, that indicates that is indicated by some um, scoring and you can see some very slight scoring out here on the edge 
So these get loose over time. They rock back and forth. And as they spin around, they start to wear just ever so slightly on the outer edge of the movement. As you can see it right here and right here. Not the end of the world, for sure. Okay. Something's, something's interesting with your hacking mechanism, which slows your, um, let's see if I can get it to come in and out here. Okay, so we've got running. And now if I pull the stem, it should immediately stop. And as you can see, it doesn't. It wants to, but it's not, it's not getting to zero balance movement. Okay, so let's keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the stem. Let's take the uh, balance assembly off. Zoom back out just a touch. So I'm expecting that either your hacking mechanism is either bent or it has uh, somehow been damaged. Okay. Let's go ahead and take the um, winding bridge off. Spring. So you have a little bit of a little bit of wear there through the brass. Okay. This is your winding rotor, winding mechanism. Paul lever here. Reduction gear. That looks okay. It seemed a little loose. I'll have to take a look at that more closely. Okay, let's take the power out of the mainspring. No, it didn't have very much to begin with. Okay, now we can really see how loose this is. You can see that that barrel down there is really moving around. Okay, so we're going to jewel that and it will be very good in the end. Let's take this out. I'm going to switch over to the calendar side and take the calendar mechanism and the keyless works apart. First, we're going to remove the Bridge. Take the pallet fork out, check out the pallet jewels. They look pretty good. I'm going to take a much closer look. Mm -hmm. Looking for a clean reflection off of these surfaces. Nice. 
Okay. That's good. All right. Let's get the calendar side broken down. Switch holder here. That screw was loose, as was that one. And that one. So your main plate screws were a bit loose. Okay, what you can see here is the wear. This is why we jewel these movements in this position. I don't know if you can see this, but there is actually a lip that's been cut into this upper um, mainspring bushing um, due to the fact that the mainspring itself has been moving around quite a bit. This black material, this is the what's called S3 lubricant that's inside of the mainspring. But here's another impact of that movement is that brass right there is the wearing of the arbor on this upper plate as, the mo as this mainspring arbor moves back and forth under power, it actually grinds into this, which reduces your power and makes your watch run poorly. So I uh, will also check the um, position of this uh, this particular bushing and this bushing to make sure they're in good shape. Generally they move over time. If this has been shocked in any way or dropped, um, it tends to lead to problems. Here's your hacking lever. I think we're going to have to perhaps either replace it, uh, which I do have a replacement, which is no big deal, or I might have to adjust it to make sure it runs right. It's usually just better to go ahead and replace it. It's not an expensive item, and if it's bent, it's, um, it's very hard to get them right. So. I have a good one, uh, and we'll we'll make sure it hacks just fine. Okay, so that'll have to come out. So here's your gear train. So this is your fourth wheel. I want to get a good look at that. That looks pretty clean. Pivots look good. Your third wheel. Escape wheel, which is giving me quite a bit of trouble. Come on, be holding your own place. Pivots, pivots look good in place. No broken pivots. Here's your hacking lever. We'll compare that to one that's uh, that's not messed up. Okay, let's get the arbor oh, pulled out of there. Oh boy. Okay, so apparently whoever did some service to this watch um, perhaps didn't get this far down um, to the service. So they left some, some material behind. Um, that's okay. We'll open this up and see how your mainspring is and clean it up. And here is your center wheel. And this is the side, this is the wheel that attaches between your, this side of the movement and the calendar side of the movement, your um, uh, cannon pinion, which operates the setting of the watch time, connects to this particular part of the 
gear train. So it's the connector between the two halves of the watch. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, a little dirty, a little grimy, but that will change. You can see again, there's some wear here from your mainspring arbor being floppy, and this, this is the hole that we're gonna put a jewel in uh, to make that all better. Okay. Okay, Andy, I'm just um, in the process here of doing some cleanup, um, and while I clean your components, I generally take a look at the case and um, get a feel for how things are. Um, overall, I'm still really good. You know, no big issues, of course. Um, one thing that seems pretty clear is that I think this is an aftermarket. Nope. It's not. It's a correct insert. Let me see. Let me look real close. I want to be 100% sure. It's not aftermarket, but I'll tell you what exactly it is. Yep. So it is correct Seiko. However, I think I'm pretty sure that it is a 6... 309 insert which is fine they were interchangeable they're a little bit different in terms of their outer texture these are smoother they have kind of a um, a shiny finish instead of a pebbled finish but the way you know it's original Seiko is that the triangle has a space at the top and the tip actually goes over the edge of the actual bezel. So you have a 6309 insert on your 6105, which is okay. The other thing I just wanted to point out while I'm in here is that your click ball is, is in place and that's good. Um, you do have a slight bit of damage here on your outer, this, I'm sorry, this inner um, retaining bezel for your crystal. It seems that somebody got in here with either a punch or a screwdriver um, and did a bit of damage. I'm not going to replace it. They're, they're rather pricey. I just bought a new old stock one. Um, and, you know, if it were broken or cracked or messed up, I would say it, it makes sense to replace it simply just for the sake of, of being safe, of not losing your crystal and not having things come apart in a weird way. Um, however, I don't think that's, I don't think that's going to be a deal breaker for you, your watch for sure. I mean, it's, it's again, it's a little bit of history that's been built in here. <laughs> um, but that's okay. I mean, it's, it's not the end of the world. I just wanted to bring it to your attention so that you know it's there. Um, Anyway, so I'm going to just kind of lightly clean things here. Um, seems, seems okay overall. It's got a bit of a crack. Um, your loom is still in here. I'm going to take out your, your seal. This seal's okay, but I don't know its origin, so I'm going to replace it with one that I know is correct for the Seiko. This will come back to you along with your case other case seal. It's still okay, um, but again, I don't know its origin, so I don't trust that it's the right size, so I'm going to replace it with one that I do trust and that I know is correct for this watch. So that will go into your return bag. Um, overall, everything's going great. 